family and I just got finished putting up the Christmas tree. It took us practically all day. My wife's a perfectionist, I guess. Well, I should say we did. It was really her that put it up. But we were all exhausted after she'd finished. And uh, I was laying there on the couch. My wife and my son were watching Mickey's Christmas Carol. You know, and I started dozing off. And right there before I dozed off, I was in a place between being asleep and being awake. And this is what I saw. I saw a newscast. And I want to be very specific about that. Like a vision. There was a female. She had dark hair. She's a newscaster. She said, police were in pursuit of a suspect connected with the Moscow University slangs. That was her exact words, the Moscow University slangs. He turned the gun on himself and took his own life. We're going to talk about the Moscow murders today. I think I found a possible suspect. I'm going to need your help investigating. You're watching Midnight Radio. I'm your host, Jerry Adams. I'm so glad you could be with me today. The things I'm going to go over today, the Moscow murders, I think I found a suspect, but I'm going to need your help investigating. I'm not saying this is a guy, but I'm saying you need to look at this guy. Also, I have interior pics of the Moscow murders house and some more information regarding that. Thank you for joining me for this daily broadcast here on Midnight Radio. Website is midnightrad.io. My phone number, if you'd like to call and leave me a voicemail message. Again, I'm not looking for tips, everybody. That goes to the police. The police want your tips. I don't. I want your WAS, your TAT, and your WATs. That's wild ass theories, your tame ass theories, what does WAS stand for? Your wild ass speculations. And this thing I'm about to tell you now might be a wild ass speculation. But before I go into that, I want to say please subscribe. If you're watching this, please subscribe. If you want to keep up with what we come out with just about every day, take a day off every now and then. If you want to continue this information, please subscribe. Hit the bell. That way you get it fresh. Whenever I send something out, you get it fresh. A lot of this stuff is time sensitive. Uh, and if you like it, please hit like. If you don't like it later after you subscribe, you can, you're can. you always free to unsubscribe. I want to thank you guys for being here again. Phone number one more time, 325-261-0892. 325-261-0892. Website midnightrad.io. I have an article that I'm working on. It's going to go up there hopefully today. I said it was going to be there last night, and that's what led me into this interesting character that I want to tell you about today. This, um, going over all my notes, writing this article, and my article is not like any other article you've read, because I'm also taking into account some uh, WAS and WATs, and even some TATs when I write this. One of the wildest ones I've heard, which doesn't, you know, speak to the fact whether it's true or not, only time will tell there, was the psychic reverend, and uh, that's a couple episodes back where she was getting impressions from her spirit guides on the suspect. But I listened to her very carefully, and I documented it very carefully, because at the end of the day, when this person is caught, I want to know if this stuff stacked up. I mean, there's a few things that uh, just crossed my mind. And, and these are times, both times, it wasn't thinking. The first one is I was sitting there, and this is after I thought about about this horrible tragedy. And this is even after I prayed about it. And I was sitting there with a blank mind, and I saw two boys. And they were young boys, about 10 years old. But this one in particular, he had like a bowl-shaped haircut, brown hair, and he had these really red, ruddy cheeks. And he was about 10 years old. And this is him when he was a kid. My mind said, this is a murder when he was a kid. 
And it also, something told me that the knife was his brother's and not his. Well, that's the feeling I got. This is, was all in the flash. And another thing is that he worked. I felt like that he worked with, um, with one of the girls at the Mad Greek or around there or something to that effect. But I got that really strong and, you know, came back to my senses. And I thought, wow, that's weird. But I wanted to document it. That's why I told it here. It might be true. It might not be. But at the end of the day, we're going to know. Also, when I was working on this article, going over all this information, going over what the psychic said, I I noticed that someone else wrote an article about what she said. You know, as I was writing mine, I saw that somebody else did. I'm like, okay, that's fine because it's not the same as mine. But then I, I noticed things that were misquoted in the article, names misspelled and things like that. And then I looked, I listened back to what the psychic said, and then I got the name, I got it better, you know, because I got the real name. One of the names was David Pallades. She said, the killer looks like David Pallades. I'm going to go over this information with you. I'm not saying this man I'm about to name to you is the murderer. Not at all. I'm not saying that. Don't treat him like he is, innocent until proven guilty. But I would encourage you to investigate this man on several different points, and it'll be easy for you to do once I give you his info. Again, I'm not pointing the finger at him, but we'll leave no stone unturned. All the information I'm going to give you is public information. So there's that. And again, I'm not saying he's a murderer. So one of the things she said was if she saw the picture of this man on Facebook, she would know if it was him. She said the spirits told her that he looked like David Pallades. It's not David Pallades, but he looked like David Pallades. So who's David Pallades? He's the author of the book Missing 411. So this is a picture of David Pallades right here. That's David Pallades. He's a... He's an author of the book. It's a book series now, uh, Missing 411. Well, that's interesting. She also said, I'm going to have David Pallades. Again, I'm not blaming David Pallades, but that is his picture. He is the author of Missing 411. She also said that she saw bread. She saw a lot of bread. And uh, let me see what I got here about bread. So she saw a lot of bread, so it made her think that this man uh, worked at a bakery, like a family bakery. And he didn't like working at the bakery, but that's where he worked at. He felt, he felt like... He felt like he saw these girls in the town... And it was like candy that he wasn't allowed to have. They weren't interested in him. And uh, let's see, things like that. Here's here's a picture of some some uh, bakery items, right? From the Idaho Farmhouse Bakery. Pies. She talked about spot pies. She talked about pastries. And she said French bread. She kept getting the idea of French bread. You know, is it possible that maybe the French bread was delivered to the Mad Greek? We'll talk about that from this place I'm about to name. So, I just casually looked something up and um, I found this. Moscow man starts bakery from scratch. I thought, well, that's interesting. What What is this story? What's that about? How does this go? Well, it's called the Idaho Farmhouse Bakery. Owner found passion during pandemic and created a new business. So the story is, there's this man. I'll give you his name in a minute. He started this bakery. Maybe I'll just read this for you. Ah, oh, there's this picture. His name is Philip Cock. Peacock, right? Philip Cock. If that is how you pronounce his name. Does does he look familiar? Does he look a little bit like maybe David Pallades? Please stick with me here. 
David Pilates, Philip Pilates, Philip. Surely I've got more than that. I do. He said when he was laid off because of the pandemic, he started baking. It gave him a feeling like he never felt before. It made him feel good, like he created something, like he did something. He talks about the moment that he took bread out of the oven. But he decided to turn this to a business. So he's still, this man, he's still there in Moscow, Idaho, and he delivers these baked goods, these pastries, these these things. He's also in, in um, different fairs and things. But then he got his job back, but he continued to sell his baked goods. So he actually started this in 2021. So he works at Pullman Building Supply, which is actually, he works in the paint department. He's a paint associate, which this is interesting. And I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. Actually, let me go ahead. Let me just walk you through all this logical thought here, okay? Let me get back to me. All right, let me show you this. And you guys actually helped me with this with your comments. So we have this man. He runs a bakery. Okay, nothing there, right? And uh, why would it be, right? Okay, so let's see. Let me let me go over some of your comments, which made a big difference in this. I actually found some things you were taking take for. Okay. Uh, this This is hard to go over, people. It really is. And again, I'm not saying it's this guy. So other things, the, the a few other things the psychic said was that she said something about this man having, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know if any of it's true. She said that he had twins or twins or something, a brother. I don't, she said that his parents were ethnic and they had really dark hair, which would be odd for parents, right? I think so. And he said his, his parents' property was out in the country. She said his parents' property was out in the country. She said he took the knife and he buried it behind a barn or shed, uh, behind the barn, into the dirt, because he wanted to keep it for later. These are very specific things, right? Well, I asked you if your wild ass theories, your, um, well, you guys gave them to me. And you also gave me some tame-ass theories and some wild-ass speculations. Here's one right here. I'm telling you, a 35- to 42-year-old and a contractor, I'd even bet he either owns a remodeling company or works for one. He probably also does a lot of nonprofit and charity work. People think he's a great guy that helps the community. I'm confident my projection is as accurate as the Witch of Indoors is. Okay, so, you know what? Something about Philip Cock. Peacock is that he was laid off, right? But he works in a a paint supply place. He works there at a paint supply place. So do you think uh do you think that he would have some contacts with some I bet he would have some contacts with some builders, don't you think so? I bet he would. And if he got laid off from the paint supply place, I'm thinking that he would have, I don't know, been able to work with some contractors. Let me show you what I pulled up, and I need your help pulling stuff up too because I'm going to put a link to all this information in the show notes. Because um, you need to look at this further. All right. So he was laid off in 2020. He started his bread business in 2021. Well, I got this bit of information. We're going to go over the pictures of the Moscow University murder house here. And I got the, I was looking at this, the interior pics were from February 18th, 2020. 
Now, at this time, the taxes went up uh, significantly because they'd remodeled. Well, they remodeled during the time that Philip Cock was laid off. Do you think that maybe he worked with a contractor that he knew to paint? Perhaps he helped paint this. I don't know. You're going to be able to find it in his Facebook page, which I myself am actually not able to look at right now. The psychic also said that he would have a hunter pick on his, he's a hunter and he would have a pick of a buck on his Facebook page, you know, with a, with horns and he would be holding up the head. She bet he has that on his Facebook page. He's also at this time, he's going to have cuts on his fingers. His parents are scared of him. They know he's off and they suspect that he might do this, but they're afraid of him. So parents, if you're listening to me and you happen to hear me say this and you know that he has that cut on his fingers. Again, I'm not saying he did it, but I don't think this person is going to be taken alive when the cops go to question him, he's going to run off and he's going to commit suicide. It's what I think. His crimes are too big. So what else do we have? He works paint and sales at Moscow Building Supply. You know, so he still works there, but he continues to have his Idaho farmhouse bakery. I'm thinking he helped remodel that house on King Road, his parents, his parents have very dark hair. That's what the psychic says. So I looked up his parents. You know, it's only fair, right? So there's a lady here. She goes by the name of Beacock. And here's what she looks like. So that'd be his mother, and she has dark hair. Apparently, Peacock has a, a, a sister named Jessica. So there's also some information. But you can also see at the top here, look at this. This is their land, his parents' land. Look at this. You think they have a barn there somewhere on this this sprawling landscape? You think this would have been a place that he could have went at night and cleaned up? They have irrigation, though. So, again, these are all WAS, wild-ass speculations. I need your help investigating all this. Now let me pull up Philip's Philip's Facebook page for you. That's the wrong Philip. Here we go. Okay. Philip Cock. I don't know who the guy with him is, but I think this is at his wedding. I'm not sure, but looking at the tie. And I do know we his his last wife's his wife's last name was Bun, right? So apparently maybe I'm surprised they didn't call it the Cock and Bun Bakery. This is him. Now, this is interesting, this picture right here. This is happened August 24th, 2016. Why is this of significance? Because his mother said, Beacock, love the shades. But what is it with the makeup, LOL? Also, you guys look so happy, so cute. Well... This is, you know, those crazy Portland concerts. So this is in Portland, Oregon. 
and he's saying that's makeup on his face. To me, it looks like somebody scratched his face. And I know that there were other killings in Oregon, stabbing killings that they haven't solved yet. So, now the stabbings weren't from 2016. But this person goes to concerts in Oregon. So do you think maybe he traveled there saying he's at a concert? Maybe here he did something that the police don't know about. Which is why it doesn't behoove any of us to sit there and do nothing and not talk about this stuff. Because they have a long history of not catching anybody for a lot of things. So if people don't talk about it, it doesn't become a priority for them, does it? Now there's uh, resources and all kinds of things. And now that this is in the public light, it's number one. But if it wasn't, guess what? There's already been two unsolved stabbings. And you think the FBI was involved in that? But look, this man clearly has scratches around his face. It's not makeup. Just food for thought, just food for thought. Does he look like David Pallades? Again, this is just something some psychic says, said. Doesn't mean anything. I'm going to put a link to this guy. Now, here's what we're looking for. We want to see. I can't go through all those pictures. You want to see if there's a picture of him in a buck. You want to see if there's dates that he went to these concerts in these different places. It's got this. Idaho murders third unsolved stabbing attack resurfaces after college sling mystery. So last Wednesday, the reporters asked if there was any possible connections between the student slings and the second unsolved stabbing. There's actually a three, three now. There's two others and the one that happened. We talked about this yesterday. Travis Juton and his sis, his uh, wife dangerously injured. So there's this other one in Washington here. Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. We have this in Washington, uh, Idaho, the one we're currently talking about. Then we have Oregon, Travis and Jamelin. Then we have Sandra Ladd in Washington. Do you think this corresponds with, I don't know, um, uh, somebody went to a concert So that's why they happen to be there. You know, so a little background on me. I'm a writer. I write mysteries and horror, okay? And uh, it is impossible, just about impossible, especially if there's no DNA left in the scene, for, for the police to catch somebody that doesn't have a motive. If there's no motive, they can't link it with with anything like that. So, for example, they have to, usually they look at the, and they say 80, 90%, 99% of the time, 95 actually, it's somebody in the person's family, like their boyfriend or husband or something that committed the murder. I've also studied this stuff deeply. Um, So, let's say you went on a trip And uh, you're going out of town to, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. You're going to a mall two states away, three states away. You're going to an art show somewhere. You just happen to be going somewhere. There's also something called economy. You know, it can't cost somebody to commit a murder. We're talking about some selfish individuals. So they're kind of casual about the murders a little more. It's like they're not going to lose a dime to murder somebody. I mean, because that's what they think about them. They care about the act of what they do, not the person they kill. They care about the things they take or objects. They don't care about people. They're not like us. They're not empathic like us. These these are psychopathic, sick people. So if this guy was going to a concert or anybody, let's say you're going to a concert, and you just pick a random house and murder somebody and then leave and then go back 200 miles to where you live, they're going to have one hell of a time finding you aren't they 
these other murders happen at 3 a.m. also. Well, what happens at 3 a.m.? You go to a concert, well, about what time does it let out? Now, there wasn't a concert on the night of the Moscow murders, but what was there? What was there? There was a big football game. We're coming into MO here. And again, I'm speculating because I'm allowed to do that. I'm not saying this man did it. I can't. I don't know. It's not my job. I'm speculating, though. I'm speculating the hell out of it, and I thank you for your theories. You guys are top-notch. Um, MidnightRad.io, they're on a, the YouTube page. You guys are giving me your, your comments and your theories, and uh, you guys are amazing because I learn a lot from you, and I mean that. So let's look a little more at this. But they, they officially drew no connection between any of these murders. Sandra Ladd, 71, she was found dead in her home in Washigal, Washington on June 14, 2020. Her death was ruled a homicide by the medical examiner, found multiple stab wounds in her torso. The two attacks happened 14 months apart, but within 70 miles of one another. The locations are roughly a five-hour drive west of Moscow, Idaho. Like the attack on the Junits, the attack happened between 3 and 4 a.m. on the 13th of the month. So on the Jutins, it happened on the 13th of the month between 3 and 4 a.m. So there, see, these. there's no similarities here. You see what I mean? Wow. Are you, are you starting to see this now? All the links, all the links to everything I'm saying are going to be on the, the YouTube page. You can check it out for yourself. I really think we should check out this Philip Cott guy. Let's see what else we have. My WAS is a guy 30. Did I already read that? No. Yes. But it's, it's, uh, she repeated it. 35 to 40 year old that does odd construction jobs and may have worked on the house remodeled. He knew the house and may have chosen it as a hunting ground. I'm telling you, this Philip guy, he was laid off at the time, and he would have known contractors, and he could have got a job painting because of one of the paint contractors. There's no place to buy paint except right there. It's a really good place. Uh, Philip Cock also went to college at the University of Idaho, and he was there for painting. He didn't graduate. He attended the the psychic also says that he really has it out for college kids because he didn't get to finish she said she thinks he went but he didn't get to go i don't believe a run-of-the-mill perverted sex offender will graduate to a mass murder with a knife oftentimes the sexual part is the killing that's what that was, that's what gets them off. I don't believe it's a stalker or a student or a nearby or a nearby perv. The coroner said they all had the sunken chest wound. That's the kill shot. The rest was rage. This is pure speculation, but I pray someone looks into the contractor that remodels a house. I'm saying look into the paint contractor if it's not the same. Who did you have work for you? A lot of work took place there, and they had plenty of time to get the lay of the land. So if he was a contractor there, and we're about to go over the pictures of the inside of the house, you're going to see the job they did. I think this man possibly painted it. There is a connection. Maybe he didn't. Again, this is speculation. If this man is innocent, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Okay, we're about to go over the pictures of the house. So 
this guy was laid off. Let's say he baked bread and painted, so he had reasons to be away from his wife. By the way, did you see a picture of his wife? She looked kind of familiar, right? She was short, round-faced, blonde hair. I'm not saying she looks like a bit older Kaylee, but there's a slight look there. I was going over all this stuff, and it made me sick in my stomach. So I wanted to share it with you. Well, whether it's him or not, I would hate for it to be him and me never have said anything. Somebody said perhaps he dumped the knife at a porta potty on the way home. So let's say he's laid off. He gets a job painting this place. Uh, he knows every room. He somehow talks to Kay- Kylie, Kaylee Gincalvez and maybe possibly Maddie. Maybe he sells his bread to the Mad Greek, or maybe there's an artisan shop right next door. Maybe he sells some of his stuff there, you know. And he's out there and he talks to them, and somehow where they live pops up, or maybe he knows where they live from, I don't know. Their Instagram, which wouldn't be hard to know because it just wouldn't be. Maybe he picked it up where they lived there, so then he knew. So maybe she made him mad because she turned down an advance or seemed under, uninterested in him in some way. And he hadn't done any murders in a while, so something infuriated him, and, and he did it. He would have the knowledge. He would have the motive. Just some things to go over about Philip Cock. There's going to be a link on the notes page, on the uh, notes to the podcast, and in the video there on, uh, we'll also put it on YouTube. Thank you guys for contacting me. Phone number again is 325-261-0892. I'll take your phone calls there. You can leave up to a three-minute voicemail message. Uh, Give me your wild ass speculations your wild ass theories or your tame ass theories you give the cops to the give the tips to the cops they're going to need it and of course i know they're holding back information but i think i got that vision and i don't see this guy being taken alive i don't he knew he knows this is this was his last two raw and he might not be worried about being caught at first but i think he he knows if he is he knows exactly what he's going to do and i believe he owns a handgun and I believe he probably drives around with it with with it all the time. Hell, right now I bet he's in that store selling paint, but he has a gun in his his car. These are things I think. And again, she talked about his car. She felt like it was a small car, an older car. Now you can go on his Facebook page and investigate this man. And I'm pretty sure he also has an Instagram and maybe he's even friends with Kaylee Goncalves on there. I will tell you this. Don't harass the man. Don't harass him. I'm not saying do that. And I'm not even saying he's the murderer. I'm telling you when I'm doing this article and I'm going over this stuff, I'm just telling you it screams to me. So I had to say something. So, there we are. Let's look at pictures of the inside of the house, okay? This isn't, these aren't murder scene photos. No one has access to, access to those except for the police. They took 4,000 of them. No. But we do have the photos, so let's look here. This is the first one it starts with. The first one we'll start with. And this is the back patio of the inside of the house at King Street. Let me see. Let me let me see if I can do better than this. Uh there we go. There we go. So this is the back patio. Uh they think the the perpetrator, the murderer might have went through here. Let me go ahead and minimize myself. We saw a hand 
print right there on this back patio. This is the back patio. You can still see the back patio, but this is the kitchen. Okay. Again, I'm going to tell you that this was recently remodeled. I got the time here. This is also the time that Philip would have been a contractor at that house painting. Uh, isn't that a coincidence? Next. The kitchen. This is the balcony. This is a balcony area. This is one of the bedrooms. I've named it bedroom one, but I'm not sure what order it is. I think this might be on the second level. This is a different angle of the same room, I believe. And um, I haven't, maybe I will later, verify which room each one of these pictures is. And if I, if I do a documentary about this, which I, wouldn't, I won't do until the end. They find the man that did it and he commits suicide or they arrest him or whatever happens. At the end of this, uh, I might do a documentary or I might wait till after the trial if he's alive. This is another angle of a bedroom. We're not sure which bedroom it is. This one's on the first level, though. So you can see that. What, so Zana's bedroom, that's the one her and Ethan were in. So there had been two bodies laying in the bed. That's the one that had red gore bleeding down the outside wall. Now, this house is approximately worth $500,000. That's a half a million. This room looks pretty big, doesn't it? Again, the girls moved in and went off the market February the 18th, 2020. So they lived in it a couple years together. They seemed so happy, didn't they? Some more of the room. Brand new. Look at those shining floors, shining floors. Pristine walls. The painter did a good job, didn't he? I'm thinking this might be the living room right here. I think this is the living room we saw in the video of the girls where they were imitating each other. I think that's the video we saw. The living area. This looks like another sliding glass door. Sliding glass door that leads to a balcony. So this one could possibly have been in a bedroom. I'm not sure. Or is that the other side of the living room here? I'm not sure. That This is a big room. No doubt this is a big room. Huge even. Six bedrooms in this house is about 2,800 square feet. I think I misspoke. Yeah. Taxes went up in 2021. The remodel I have around the time, February 18th. All right, here we go. These are right after the remodel. Yeah, this is another picture of the kitchen. This is the laundry room slash bathroom. There's... Two and a half bathrooms. This might be considered one of the halves. And you can see, you know, it has a shower, but there's no shower curtain yet. This is a patio. Uh, back patio, I believe. This is another bathroom. Another angle of that kitchen. This is a bathroom. It's like the bathroom. I don't know. Might be right off the living room there.
I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching Midnight Radio. I'm your host, Jerry Adams. If you have a comment or question, a wild-ass speculation, a wild-ass theory, a tame-ass theory, I'd be glad to hear it. You can... If you're listening to us on Spotify, on Spotify they have a message button right there. You can use your phone, hit that message button, and send me a message. Uh, also, you can comment. I get all those. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It helps us out so much. Please hit that bell so you get up-to-date notifications. If I keep getting information, new information every day, I'll do I'll do a whole show on it. So I'll continue with that. Other than that, I'm, I have a lot of other stories from other cases I'm going to go over in a consequent episodes. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a playlist of the Moscow Murders, Moscow Murders playlist, so I can put all these in there so you can keep up with the beginning of the end of this. I do have a have an article coming out on MidnightRad.io. That's our website. That's MidnightRad.io. I'm going to put that up. I'll let you know when I do that. Uh, check out the community tab on YouTube not the next broadcast i'll let you know all about it thank you for tuning in until next time all my best